Hi, I'm Brian Drebber. Welcome to Drebbyville is what we call it here. And uh, we think we're among the first, as we said in our other video, to keep bees in Slovenian AZ hives. And I'm really honored to have Dr. Janko Bozic from Slovenia, who's an expert in not only using these hives, but in the Langstroth hives that we have normally used here in the United States. Dr. Thank Bozic, you. Janko, if I may, there are so many questions, and many of which you've already answered, but what is the basic difference between keeping bees like this and the way we normally do in the stack boxes called Langstroth hives? Okay, the basic difference that we can really easily work from the back side. You don't need to leave soft part to get to the brood chamber, so you, you can get really fast and easily to the brood chamber. That's one of the main advantages. And of course, you're protected against hot sun and also uh, protected against rain if you have a nice bee house. Without knowing any of those things in advance, I have noticed that the bees seem, I mean, I, the human likes it a lot better, but the bees seem to do better in these hives. You said two things in our meeting. We had a meeting earlier um, about how the honey is very often drier in an AZ yes, hive. Yes, it, it, it was surprising that uh, having hives in AZ and Langstroth in the same location, we get usually around 2% drier honey in AZ hive than in Langstroth hive. The other thing is that the bees just seem to do better. I mean, as you can see, we have very, very strong colonies here, and they, they don't seem to have as much stress. They, the temperature is very much the same from day to night, even with the building, and, and they just seem to, to like it better. Yeah, I, I'm surprised that they're doing so very well in this hot environment because uh, they're used to have these hives in much colder climate, like in Slovenia and Alpi country. But uh, it looks like also in hot weather is very good to have protection, some additional shield and microenvironment for the bees. Winter, I, I, I've related the facts that I had um, 17 Langstroth hives and I had four AZ hives just sitting outside last summer. And um, in November when I began to build this building, I put the AZ hives in, in place uh, before the building was even complete. We had a warm spell during Christmas, and then it got very cold in January and again in February. You know, I had uh, 12 hives die outside, but none in the building. Um, this isn't scientific for me. I don't know why. There may have been lots of circumstances, but it seems like that that alone was the reason. Yeah, it might be this more constant environment with less changes and not so rough changes are better for survival. And of course, uh, after some brood present at, uh, at the end of the wind, uh, at the end of the winter, and the beginning again cold weather, it's better if you have well protected hive at that time, and bees are uh, better in uh, in taking care of all brood and still getting some honey. If the temperature inside the building is maybe doesn't go below 40 degrees, even when it's eight or 10 degrees outside, the bees won't fly, but they walk. Right? They yeah, walk they, to they, the food? Yeah, they can walk easier than to the food because they have uh, a better outer temperature around the cluster and they can access the food in such case, of course. That, that's much, much better. Feeding inside the hive, too, it keeps the food itself from being cold and so the, the temperature, they're not drinking cold food. Yeah, that's also one thing. Uh, usually it's feed the inside of the hive and you feed the inside and that's also building is warmer so that temperature difference is lower. So the fit is uh, at higher temperature. The other thing I like is the fact that both the brood chamber and the honey chamber are, are the frames are the same. You can interchange them. So yeah. when you manipulate frames, you know, what are some of the circumstances whereby you would take frames out of the bottom and put them in the top or, or, or vice versa? Okay, one thing is, uh, one possibility is to take some covered brood to put on the top to get more space for a brood at the bottom to increase the size of the colony so lowering the pressure in brood chamber and increasing the amount of bees in the honey section. Some are worried about potential crossing of contaminants if you're using uh, chemical acrocytes in a hive, then you have to be careful doing that uh, because of potential movement of uh, these pollutants. But otherwise, uh, this is good for, for development of colony if you're doing carefully and not just in front of cold uh, weather. Uh, that's one thing. And uh, of course, uh, another thing which you're not very sure, but like, because you have darker comb in, in the honey section, you're getting usually darker honey, which usually has more antioxidants. 
mo moving friends from the brood section to the honey section could be a problem to, to move also contaminants like treating bees with acaricides when you're putting that honey section could have some remains in honey. If you're using organic acids, you, of course you're in a much better way. Other thing is, which is interesting, that in dark comp usually have also darker honey. Some general approaches that honey should be light as much as possible, but we know that dark honeys are more antioxidative. So here is not very clear, like in Slovenia, we are now thinking about uh, what to teach beekeepers to have uh, white frames in the honey section to have lighter honey or keeping dark frames to have more antioxidative honey you know it's not very clear if that dark comp is really something bad for quality of honey is or perhaps even something good on the other hand if we put like a brood into honey section we, we are taking like uh, some of open brood there and we are getting some younger bees which are feeding larvae for our jelly and maybe more our jelly is transferred into the honey. So also maybe from that point of view honey would contain more honey secretions than uh, honey which doesn't have in honey sections no brood present. So that, that's maybe a, another thing which has to be clear, clarified if that is the case or not. If that is the case this way of beekeeping could have some nice advantages of having some uh, more antioxidative honey and more uh, proteins secreted by the bees inside. I also found it fascinating, changing the subject a little bit, that because of the AZ hives, the way they're, the AZ frames, the way they're designed, that you can actually turn them upside down, turn them backwards, yep. put them in any way that suits your needs. Uh, what would be some of the examples of that? Yeah, one thing is uh, good that uh, if there is quite a huge amount of honey in the middle frame, you can turn that back, scrap a little bit and bees will, will remove it and you will have larger area with the uh, brood in the frame. And also if there was left some empty space at the bottom of the frame, bees would uh, build additional comp on the top when you put that on the top. So you're getting more occupied frame size and more brood around, that's one thing you're increasing actual, actual amount of brood in the hive in that way. Which is always good. I guess the logical question, and I almost hate to ask it, is there anything that's not better about an AZ hive versus other kinds of hives, specifically, I guess, the Langstroth hives that were most commonly used here? Yeah, one thing which is really the case is how to increase the size. If you would like to add additional supper, you're losing space. So you have to extract the honey or make some additional enlargements of the hive. So there exists some possibilities for that, as I talked in lecture, like to have a backpack or have a free section hive at least. These are possibilities or some are doing even different, different kind of enlargements, but some commercial beekeepers did that and are very successful. Um, I, I guess in closing, we would just have to say that while this is new to us here in America, it, it already seems to be better, at least in my opinion, and having you here to confirm some of the things that we have found out by accident, I guess, has really been a pleasure. Thank you so much for, okay. for coming. Thank you. <laughs>